Another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Your doctor will tell you that one of the most important factors in good health is plenty of rest, plenty of refreshing sleep. Without a sufficient amount of sleep regularly, our bodies are apt to run down, our resistance to sickness and disease be lowered. No, there isn't any substitute for the tonic of a full night's rest. Now, some people have difficulty getting to sleep easily at night. They lie awake for hours, just can't get to sleep. Well, those people don't know the secret of a cup of Horlicks malted milk, hot, at bedtime. A drink of Horlicks to relax your body, soothe your nerves, help you to fall asleep quickly, help you to sleep soundly, too. Tonight, just before you go to bed, drink a cup of Horlicks, hot. You'll sleep better, more restfully. You can get Horlicks, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor. And now, let's get ready for Lum and Abner. Well, yesterday, Pine Ridge received a very great shock. It was discovered that the oil well that Lum and Abner and Grandpappy Spears brought in and sold to Squire Skimp wasn't an oil well, after all. The old fellows had drilled into one of the pipelines of the Southern Pipeline Company, which runs close to Pine Ridge transporting oil from distant oil fields to their refineries. <laughs> As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner over at Lum's house. The old fellows are just beginning to realize what has happened. Listen. Hey, then, we ride back to where we started, Abner. Hey, no, we ain't neither, Lum. When we started, we had a good grocery store down there, and now we ain't got nothing. Yeah, looks like we're going to have to start all over again. Well, we were sitting right smack on top of the world there for a while, though. Yeah, but, but you've got to recollect the world turns around. You never know when you're on the top or where you're on the bottom. Yeah. Oh, that uh, news yesterday just knocked the foundation right out from under all them air castles I had built. Well, <laughs> right smart of fun while it lasted. We got to find out how it feels to be rich. Yeah. Our trouble was we was rich without no money. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I feel like I owe somebody something for all the good times I've had. These trips I've been making. What trips? I, I never know you left town. Oh, me. In the last two weeks, I've been all over the United States. <laughs> Seen America first. Why you ain't done no <laughs> such a thing, Lon? You've been right here yeah. all the time. Well, I just the uh, same as made the trip. I've been studying about them so much. Laid over there in bed of a night and imagined myself down at Daytona Beach, Florida. <laughs> Hot Springs in California. See, like I owe somebody something for all them trips. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just like that car I was going to buy, that big gray one. <laughs> and I put about 10,000 miles on that driver, drive it all over the country, in my mind. Oh, yeah. I never will forget how everybody's eyes bugged out when I drove up in front of the blacksmith shop over. <laughs> they just took on over. Yeah, you mean you just imagined how they looked? Yeah. Yeah, oh, I, I never was inside the car, but... <laughs> I used to sit over at the place at night and imagine myself driving it. <laughs> well, I ain't got no regrets over it, Abner. I've always wondered how a fella felt to have all the money he wanted, and I found out. Yeah, but now that it's all over, what are we going to do for a living? I've got to raise some money some way or other. Oh, well, we can get in some kind of business. Well, you can't go into business without money of some kind, on them. Yeah, that's right, ain't it? Poor Elizabeth and Pearl. Off down there in Texas. I know they relation will be tired of feeding them. I just wish there's some way for me to get them home. Well, you better leave them down there until you find something to do. It's bad enough for us to go hungry without you letting your women folks suffer. You better leave them down there where they'll be took care of. Yeah, well, now, that might be a good idea for her. She comes back now and finds out we've lost the store and the oil well and everything else. Well, <laughs> Ain't gonna be room for both of us here in Pine Ridge, no how. No, I just leave them there till you get on your feet again. <laughs> Don't 
dog, it's just a shoulder on his shoe. It's just any thinner. I'm going to be on my feet any day now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll study something up for us to do. It looks like a shame, Lum. Fella gets up to our age and has to get out and start all over again. Yeah. I never thought I'd ever have to hit another lick of work. Well, don't get to feeling sorry for, for yourself, Abner. That's the worst thing a fella can do when he gets up again. Well, ain't nobody else going to feel sorry for, for me. I may as well do it myself. No, that's the wrong altitude to take. When I see somebody feeling sorry for, for himself, I know right then that he's give up. He's a goner. Well, I ain't give up, but I'm just sort of uneasy. Body's got to eat, you know. Well, I uh, recollect that old letter saying, <laughs> every cloud's got a silver lining. Yeah. Them clouds are just about as far out of reach as money is. <laughs> Wouldn't help me none if they had gold line. Well, I hate to think about doing it, but if the worst comes to the worst, we well, might... Well, it has. It's done come. Yeah, I started to say I hate to go in debt, but if there ain't no other way out of it, we could mortgage our store building or borrow a little money on our farms. Yeah, if we can find anybody that'll loan us anything on them. I don't believe it's a... Well, there's got $10, and let us have it on the best house in town since they're all boom busting. Yeah. I was just looking down there to folks leaving town this morning. Trucks and automobiles and wagons and everything else. Yeah. Getting out of town as fast as they can. Well, natural, when they found out that there weren't no real oil well, all these strangers had come in here and pull out. I, I had to turn around and walk back over the place. Just couldn't bear to watch it. Yeah. Catch your sadness sort of come over me. Yeah. Your pine ridge was growing so. Oh, yeah. Everybody excited over the oil boom. See it now, it looks like a picnic ground the day after the picnic. So. Oh, law me, it's so dead down there. Everybody could fire a cannon right down the main street and not hit us all. Won't be two weeks before you can graze cattle right there in the street. Yeah, I was talking to Dick Huddleston this morning. He said his business had fell off something wonderful since yesterday. Well. well he had eight extra clerks working for him. He had to let them all go this morning. Yeah, I bet he was mad about it. He was making money hand over fist. No, right he never let on if he was. Never, huh? No, sitting back there by the stove when I come in and bannered me for a checker game the minute I walked in. Well. <laughs> <laughs> I know he must feel bad about it, though. But you know, Dick, he, he wouldn't let on if we killed him. No, no. That's what makes me feel sort of bad about it. We was the ones that thought we had oil well and got everybody's hopes built up, and then the fox she went. Oh, well, that's bad all right, Mom, but it done some good. If we woke some of these folks up around here. They ain't had an idea in 15 years. That old Uncle Fred Cecil. He put in that hamburger stand down there. It's the first time that he's ever got... I piled that rocking chair off in his front gallery there as far back as I can recall. Yeah, you've done that all right. Sure. Throwing some of these old nesters back to life. Sure. But the town's going to look like a graveyard for a while. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'd have had any sense at all. We'd have known from the first that there weren't no oil well. Well, I don't see why. It looked like oil well to me. Uh, yeah, it looked like a... Thought one of look, I never did see one. Well, if I'd have stopped to think, though, I recollect them laying that pipeline through here about 15 years ago. Yeah. I never knowed exactly where it was at, but I knowed it just run east of town here summer. Well, I can see now why Caleb had so much trouble drilling a well. Don't you know, just before he struck oil, he had to take the bed out and shorten it about four or five times. Yeah, he, he thought he was a hitting a big rock or some kind down there. Yeah. It was that iron pipe he was a drilling through. Why, sure it was a pipeline. Natural, when he drilled a hole in it, the oil spurred up out of the ground. Yeah. Well, I'm just thankful for one thing, that we sold it before they found out what they did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Dick Hudson was telling me they're going to make old Squire pay for every bit of oil that, that run out of there. <laughs> oh, me, now that's going to amount to something. Oh, yeah. It? Well, Dick said uh, he said it run to $4,200. $4,200? That's man. what he said. <laughs> I hate to laugh about anybody having hard luck, but somewhere or other, I can't bring myself to feel sorry for old no, Squire. No, I can't either. He had it coming to him if ever a man did. <laughs> here he went to all the trouble of tricking us into selling a well to him, buying it under a consumed name that way. <laughs> now it's going to cost him over seven thousand dollars to get out of it, counting yeah. the three thousand dollars that he gives us. Yeah, that, that sort of even things up for some of the skinnings they give us, Mom. <laughs> yeah, and he was trying to give us a skinning on this uh, on this deal, but the thing backfired on him. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> I'll bet you he'll leave us alone from here. Yeah, Lord, no, he won't bother us no more. <laughs> Me and him coming over here yesterday trying to trade back with us. Yeah. Making us think he was doing us a big favor and for letting us have it back. He <laughs> know right then that, that, that we drilled into a pipeline when he came over here. Of course he did. Yeah. He was trying to get that agreement back we made him sign. Well, I sure ain't just what he's doing when he come over. Yeah, you see, he's responsible for everything according to that agreement. Yeah, and he'd have did anything to get that back, too, long. Well, he made us sign the same kind of agreement himself when he sold us that land over there to start with. Yeah. And he had to pay off $355 to satisfy them stockholders. That's what we So do. I don't feel bad about this. Yeah, well, now, Lon, there ain't no way for him to get out of it, is it? Oh, no, no, it's legal. I yeah. looked after that part of it myself. <laughs> Got his name right on it. Witnessed and everything. Well, the... There's something about I do hereby and herewith agree or... Wait, how does that go? Let me see that thing again. Yeah, yeah, I want to be sure that green man's worth a lot to us, Lon. Abner. Abner. What's the matter, Lon? You, you look like you saw gold. It's gone. It's gone. What's gone? That green man we had for our sign. I granted I had it right here in this pocket. It ain't there. It's gone. You don't suppose our old friend Squire Skimp could have had anything to do with the disappearance of that agreement? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, here's a little scene that took place in the Conklin home. In the living room were Mrs. Conklin and her sister, Mrs. Mead, from out of town. The sisters hadn't seen one another in some time. They had a lot to talk about. One topic was Mrs. Mead's little daughter. And that's an interesting story, too. So let's listen. How's little Irene? You know, I haven't seen her in... Well, it must be about two years. Well, he's fine, Vera. The healthiest little youngster you've ever seen. Oh, he's full of life and pep every minute of the day. Irene is one. Mm -hmm. The last time I saw her, she was a thin little type with no color at all, and she seemed so, well, listless. I suppose she did, but that was my fault, I'm afraid. Your fault? Yes, I hadn't taken the trouble to find out about Horlick's malted milk. It was Irene's school teacher who told me about that. And what a scene we had the day she told me. A scene? Why? What was wrong? Well, I resented her telling me how to raise my child. I thought she had a lot of nerve, and I told her so, too. And not in very gentle language, either. <laughs> well, it's a wonder she didn't walk out on you. <laughs> Isn't it? She didn't, though, thank goodness. She just sat there calmly all the while that I was raving. Then she told me that she didn't mean to be impertinent, but she did want me to know how Horlicks had helped her little brother. He was sickly, uh, undernourished, like Irene, you know. Oh. Well, Horlicks did wonders for him. She told me all about Horlicks uh, also, about its valuable nourishment and its vitamins and mineral elements. You know, that helped children develop husky bodies and sound bones and teeth. You took her advice then? Yes, fortunately. I went right down to the drugstore and bought a package of Horlicks for Irene. And has Horlicks helped her? Oh, marvelously, Vera. I've never seen such a change in a child. Ever since that day her teacher called on me, Irene has had a glass of Horlicks with every meal. Good. And she drinks it between meals, too. <laughs> and how she loves it. <laughs> but all children love Horlicks, I guess. It's such a delicious drink. And that's the story of how Mrs. Mead found out the value of Horlicks malted milk as a children's food drink. And Horlicks malted milk is something that every parent should know about. You won't find anything that will mean more to your children's good health. You can get Horlicks malted milk, you know, in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.